Hi, I'm Gila Nehemia, sacred erotic love mentor, poet, and author, and you're tuned into the Collaboration Ascension series. And I'm so excited because I have Steve Noble with me. I was following him. Um, I found him actually, I think on Instagram or maybe on Facebook. And then a friend shared this beautiful affirmation about the starseed magician with me from SoundCloud. And I was just totally hooked. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> he he uh -huh. activated me, I think, through that, um, through those affirmations. So I'll have Steve introduce himself, uh, but I'm so glad you're here, Steve. Thanks, Sheila. It's really lovely you invited me and um, nice to be here and all the mayhem going around the planet at the moment for a moment of peace. Yes, true, true. Can you say a few words about yourself? Yeah, um, so I was born in London in the late 50s. <clears throat> so my parents were products of the Second World War. They were children in the Blitz. So they, they grew up with kind of uh, 1950s values, which was all about safety, security, fitting in, working hard. <clears throat> and then I came along and they were trying to really impress on me these values of, you know, that's the way the world is. And um, my grandmother, who I love dearly, was also impressing upon me the, the security and safety value. These were all these old values of the <clears throat> of my family and parents and grandparents. And I grew up and it utterly threw me off because I tried to be normal and I tried to be safe and secure, get a safe and secure job. And it was probably the worst thing I could have done at the time because it wasn't really very good for me. I didn't fit very well. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, I went into banking in the city of London for 10 years. I mean, me, you know, like more creative type, spiritual creative type going into banking. And it was, in a way it was perfect because it was the opposite of who I truly was. So I got the opposite. And then um, I left there and went into local government. And again, I got, that was a different environment, more left wing, uh, a bit crazy, but still it was full of politics and difficult. And so, I didn't find the place where I belonged. And one of the common things we'll talk about starseeds later on is not really feeling a belonging. I didn't really feel I belonged in the family nor in any of these kind of jobs or places. And when I was waking up, you know, uh, even leaving school, I kind of had to, I lost most of my friends because I just didn't resonate with drinking or football anymore. So I started to shift and um, I was trying to think, well, where do I belong in the world? So that was my introduction to the world really. And I had a, yeah, challenging teenage years. And then, yeah, there's more about, that was my early introduction to the world. So really trying to find my place, trying to, but I was always drawn to these alternative, you could say weird ways of thinking, alternative ways of thinking that of course freaked out my parents, et cetera. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that because I think a lot of us have had similar types of childhoods where I know that I was like always really quiet, you know, never ever thought I would even be doing something like I'm doing right now, <laughs> you know, having this YouTube series or coaching people and guiding them to trust their intuition. You know, I just, you know, I would thought that I would just be successful being a teacher or a lawyer or something like that. Um, yeah. And until that, that fell apart and, and I, and I knew actually, and maybe you can resonate with this. I kind of knew when I decided to go on this route a couple of years ago, there was no other way for me. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I could have a side job working in a, you know, in some software company or something, but I knew that this was my path and I had, I had a mission to complete. Did you, mm. do you feel like that? Yeah. I think a, a lot of star seeds have that feeling. Some are able to break through their resistance and their cultural conditioning to get through to it. I mean, I, I think one of the, bits of advice I would give any star seed is to embrace their weirdness because the weirdness is their brilliance. And even though that's hard to believe and that's the problem, it's hard to believe. So many years ago, a coach actually said to me, you're a natural magician. And I completely went, what, what does that mean? Well, what is that going to, what, what can I do with that? You know, I didn't know what to do with that. So we kind of discount our natural path. It may be obvious to other people, other star seeds, but it's less obvious to us. We discount our gifts. We don't want to be too weird. We, I mean, I, I wanted to fit in. I didn't really want to go out there too weird. It was a bit scary as a teenager to be too weird. So I tried, I tried fitting in. I, there are lessons in fitting in, of course. Ultimately, you realize it doesn't work. But um, I kind of got a, a feel of what the parameters were of this 
world, this, the rules, you know, that kind of govern money and society and those kind of things. And so I, and I hit my head against those rules and I thought, well, I don't like these rules very much. I want to live a different life to that, which meant uh, for me uh, eventually um, taking a kind of step away from um, what my family believed away from a marriage, from what my, you know, what I had bought into up to that point, which was challenging. You know, I had two young children and there was a mortgage and everything. And my parents were disproving parents, you know, so here I am going, well, I'm just feeling this incredible impulse. I've just got to follow it. And so that's a challenge for a lot of star seeds is to follow the impulse and see where it goes. Trusting there's a timing, there's an G- internal GPS system that we can trust. And that takes time. Do we, can we trust it? And there's an ego that's rattling on in our heads. Yama, yama, don't do it. You know, stay safe. And there's all this. So there are challenges in following the path for sure. But ultimately, the path is all there is. If we, if we avoid the path, then it's really going to be unsatisfying, frustrating, and very challenging, really, I think. I, I completely agree. And, and, uh, and I think the funny thing is, or I mean, I guess it's not funny, it's part of the path. But when I realized that I was here to do something different than, you know, what I, what I was kind of not brainwashed, but, you know, conditioned to believe to do, um, I started to attract all those types of people into my field. And, and I think that's kind of a natural progression. Would you agree? Yeah. So we start to attract people that <clears throat> reflect that longing inside of us for something more. Um, I mean, I, I had, an, uh, when I was a teenager, or early, in the early 20s, I started looking at spirituality, but I couldn't really, it didn't really click. So for some reason, I think my higher self said, no, go and explore the normal world and come back. And then at a certain point, it did click and I was off. And there was all kinds of people entering my life and synchronicities and signs and uh, omens and, you know, all these books falling off shelves and signs on T-shirts and everything guiding me. And I very quickly found one sign led to another, one person to another, really quickly in quick succession. And so I started to trust, oh, something magical is happening here. And actually, it's not just my mind fancifully making things up. There's some deeper force at work in the universe. And it seems to want to guide me somewhere and push me away from certain things. And the more I flow with it, the better. And the more I resist it, the worse it got. Resistance is not a good strategy. Um, So an ex-partner had an experience of uh, kayaking in Slovenia. And um, her instructor, she wasn't aware of this at the time, said, why are you fighting the river? Stop fighting the river. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a great metaphor for or analogy for um, how we do it. We don't know really that the river is actually guiding us and we fight it and we try and steer it and control it. Of course, we've got no real idea where the river is trying to take us. We can see three months down the line, a year down the line, but we've got no real idea. And so when I really learned to trust that river, and all the signs and people coming in and the guidance that way, not that way. Then magical stuff started happening. I found myself um, eventually being a director of this spiritual organization. It was the right timing because mm-hmm. I left the mainstream world at exactly the right time. I got the, the impulse jump now. I jumped and I think it took about 18 months. And I, uh, but it was a perfect timing because if I had jumped any later, I think I'd have missed the opportunity, to be honest. Mm -hmm. so that was a goal that was a brilliant opportunity that opened up this whole path i spent 13 years as a director of this spiritual organization Mm -hmm. organizing spiritual talks for all kinds of people wow and uh, and meeting all these amazing characters you know like eckhart toll and the byron katie's and donald walsh's yeah i always wanted to meet them yeah me too (laughs) yeah and then i was having tea with them Whoa, nice. So that was really nice. And, um, and also learning the dynamics of a company like that because there are ego dynamics and there's, there's also practical boundaries you've got to learn around money, times, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. It's a really good training for me. But it's also good to trust my intuition because by trusting my intuition actually it helped a lot in guiding the company. And so my intuition came on even more online. My creativity started coming online. So when I left in 2012, I got the impulse to leave. And so after resisting for a while, I left at the winter solstice 2012. I thought it was a magical moment. And um, here in London, it's 1313, as I mentioned. uh, (laughs) So I left and then I had a bumpy few years. And then I found myself 
aligning with this work I'm doing now. And it was a bit of a surprise. I'd never expected to be doing anything like this. And at the beginning, I did resist a little bit, but I realized, you know, resistance is not good. Don't resist, go with it. And so I started, uh, I think I was in Greece doing a writing retreat, running one. And I had this first transmission come through in Greece and I could feel something coming through. And I was like, what's that? And it took me a few days of meditating and sitting with it to kind of get what it was. And uh, they wanted me or spirit wanted me to channel this goddess energy. And I was like a bit re reluctant to be channeling, you know, like I've got a fat male body. I don't know if I wanted to be channeling a, a goddess through my system. It was the first one. So I was a bit hesitant, but eventually I did it and that came through. And then, then they started coming through in different ways, you know, star, star races and all kinds of things. And they come through and then I have an intense connection and then that connection disappears. I can't remember what's in a lot of those transmit. I have to go back and listen to them. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm an unconscious I'm fully conscious with it, but I just can't remember them. There's just so many things that come through that I have to then go, okay, now, and then it goes, and then, right, now what? No, and then it's another thing that comes through. So I'm a bit unusual that I'm not channeling like Archangel Michael or something. It's, it's different energies. I, I guess I've been set up for this, and I'm open to it. And so that's why the transmissions come through in a very jigsaw puzzle. Like I didn't understand the logic of them, but they come through and there is a kind of logic as a jigsaw has a logic. The pieces come together and they find their own place at the right time. So people, you know, say to me, what should I do first or next? And I think really you have to look and go, well, what's alive within you and what do you need? And then in there somewhere will be something that hopefully will help you. Well, I think I just want to reiterate because of um, just for people who may be new to you, are new to this whole concept. It's like, you know, what we've been talking about is want to follow your intuition to wherever it leads, because it's going to lead you to the right direction. And yeah. all of us, you know, myself included, have resistance to that because we're not used to it. But the second thing is the, the downloads. And I think, I, I, for me at least, it's about creativity. And sometimes, um, like for, I write poetry and so, and I sometimes, I don't even know what comes through. Like it comes through and I was telling a previous person, like, and then it becomes, um, like, you know, it's like when, what Steve, when I was listening to one of Steve's, um, is it, what do I say? A download yesterday on SoundCloud. Yeah. Um, I just totally connected to it. I was just like, okay. Like, so I, I finally admit I'm a Sarsi, like I'm here to do something amazing. And, yeah. and to be honest, I, I've been resisting it. I've yeah. been, because I feel like part of all of us, we're resisting our own divinity, our own power. You know, we want to play small, want to be like, I want to say, oh no, you know, I'm not really an amazing poet, you know, but I'm here to activate someone, you know, and people yeah. are activated by Steve. People are activated by whoever who you are, who's listening. We're activated by you. And yeah. we're calling you in right now. Do you yeah. Agree? Yeah, I get that. Because um, at the beginning um, <clears throat> with the work, so I, when I worked at Alternatives, this, this organization, spiritual organization, I think I, I worked out, I reached probably 100,000 people in 13 years through events. I mean, not me personally, but organizing them mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in that time, I wrote a few books, but that was really just a hobby on the side. And uh, I was doing lots of trainings. But it was, again, it was just for my own personal thing. And then when I started this work, I got the feeling, I got the calling, you've got to reach as many star seeds across the planet as possible. And I was thinking, well, all right, how many am I looking at? And I, I sat down, I thought, well, how about 100,000 in five years? That's a good number. And I, my YouTube channel's currently got nearly 89,000 and I'm in four years and a bit. So I'm, I'm on target really, I guess. So this is the mission to reach them. But, but why am I reaching them? What was the point of reaching them? And the point of reaching them is, we're in this ascension process and the ascension process is a, po a process of kind of global shift of change in consciousness. Um, it's a shift that's happened since the end of world war II. slowly. It happened very slowly. Star seeds started coming in with a different way of thinking to challenge the old mindset of the fifties and the old pre-war, you know, the war mentality forties and fifties. So you had like people like David Bowie and Jimi Hendrix and, uh, a lot of them coming into music because, um, you know, David Bauer, there's a star man waiting in the sky, all this kind of thing coming through. And 
that really hit a peak for a while in the 60s with flower power as all these kind of star seeds were growing up and wanting to go to Woodstock. And then it kind of dissipated because it was a bit, it, was, it didn't really have a lot of direction. It was just like a, a, a mass shift, but not really having um, a strong enough focus perhaps. And then that broke up into a number of other spiritual paths and you know, people going off to India and sitting with Osho. There's all kinds of things going on. And then I woke up in the 90s and I think there was another revolution going on in the 90s. There was a lot of books being written and spiritual teachers starting to come out the woodwork. Channels were coming out. I mean, channels have been coming out since the 60s, but um, I started finding them in the 90s. So I had, I had my revolution in the 90s. So for me, the 90s were revolutionary. And then come 2000, I felt that revolution kind of peaked and it was being kind of embraced by the mainstream and kind of dumbed down. You know, there's lots of people jumping on the bandwagon and thousands of coaches and spiritual mentors. And so people are like, well, who do we go to? Lots of events so that happened. But really the 2012 trigger point was the decision point, which was, is humanity going to ascend or not? And not ascending was, would mean following the old timeline, which is not a good trajectory. <clears throat> if you think of um, what the consciousness of the planet has been doing so far around nuclear weapons, destroying the environment, war, grabbing resources. I mean, it's th that timeline doesn't really end well. You need this shift in consciousness. Otherwise, you know where it's going to end. It's not going to end. It's not going to have a happy ending, you know. So the ascension process here. So now we're in this process of a number of people on the planet with a new consciousness and a larger number on the planet with an old consciousness. And there's this kind of volatility as the two are together, like two rivers meeting. And there's a lot of uh, yeah, volatile energy, chaos. So now we're seeing chaos, you know, and the chaos has been created by this light, dark, light, anti-light forces coming together. And I remember re reading some of what Jesus Christ said, and he said, I do not come to bring peace. I come to bring the sword. And it made no sense to me at the time. But now I understand if you bring a very intense light into a low frequency energy, it creates disturbance. It disturbs and star seeds are essentially disturbing the old peace, the old ways of doing things, but it has to be done. And for a lot of star seeds, star seeds fall asleep mostly. And they're very few, some, I think now some are waking up earlier, but certainly in my time and maybe your time, it, you weren't born awake. You know, some of them are coming in much more awake now and um, they have a very different energy. They have a different uh, awareness. They have a different intelligence they can download. So this thing of downloading and transmissions, I've seen, uh, I've seen teenagers download information for their exams without hardly any studying. And I've looked at them and go, that's incredible. You know, how do you pass with A's and you, all you're doing is being on a computer game all day long, but they're able to do it. You know, and this is the intelligence they have. They could just download that kind of stuff. A bit like um, Tesla could do, you know, uh, Nik Nikolai Tesla mm -hmm, could mm -hmm. do it where he could just download whole experiments, these consciousness, play it out and go, that will work. And so these kids have got the same kind of thing. Einstein, another early uh, star seed, actually. Um, so star seeds are changing the consciousness. At the moment, I think it's about one in three children being born as star seeds, roughly, but that's going to go up. We're in this very volatile period at the moment. 2019 to 2022 is the most volatile period I've always felt and which will see global changes. You know, now we're seeing fires and storms and uh, virus pandemics, you know, it's all arising in the last few years, really intensely. And the collective's going, what's hitting us? But the news is kind of, on the one hand, reassure them, don't worry, everything's fine. On the other, panic you know with this virus thing it's kind of really weird seeing all the shops being ent emptied of pasta and toilet rolls it's, uh, <laughs> it's the most bizarre you know i mean star seeds i think are less likely to be so if you look at people who are in the shops going mental about toilet rolls they're not usually star seeds star seeds are hanging back going well i'll just buy my fruit and veg and i'll be all right you know i'll go to whole foods or whatever and get my green powders or whatever it is <laughs> but the clear well, where's my, my McDonald's burgers and where's my pasta and where's my Coca-Cola? Um, so the mass frenzy is mostly in the, um, the non star C community, I would say. They're reacting to huge levels of fear. And that fear is, is deliberately being pumped out there. One on the pretext, of course, there is a lot of well-meaning people that want to not allow this pandemic to go off. But there's a lot of 
media frenzy just generating all this sheer panic you know could have been dealt with a very different way probably i think um also the chinese government probably didn't help by hiding it for a little while so yeah we're in this weird period i think it's going to be very weird and between now and 2022 we're not out of the intensity of this period because uh, what it's trying to do is break through global systems break through global belief systems global stories about this is the way we have to live on the planet those stories are toast they have to be they have to be broken through because the planet can't survive another 50 years of the craziness we've been living so star seeds and all and gaia herself and nature itself is is creating massive change and a massive rethink on the planet i think I really like that you brought that up as well. I mean, everything you said was amazing, but I wanted to just focus on that for a moment because I think that we're all here to create a conscious um, life, you know, uh, of, you know, in terms of higher consciousness because we don't have to live like anybody. You and I might have completely different lives, but we still are star seeds. Yeah. Um, and because we choose what we want and how we want to live our life. Yeah. And, and I want to emphasize that because, you know, I have clients, I have people following me and, you know, and I, and I think that every part of our life can be a conscious creation with the divine. If we allow ourselves to live that way and not some of the big things, at least that I dealt with was judgment, you know, and, and, and shame for not doing the way people want me to do it. Um, yeah. but I feel like some of my kids are, are have a bit of star seed in them. They're like totally, you know, conscious of things and they understand when I talk to them in this kind of language and they're yeah. young. So, um, well, it's a blessing to have a star seed mother really because star seeds really need increasingly at least one parent, usually the mother who's a star seed, hopefully sometimes the father, but usually the mother so that your energy will help them to feel it's okay to be myself. It's okay to be me. You know, was a lot of us, I was born into non-star seed family. It took me a lot longer to go, is it okay to be me? Do I have permission to be me? What is me? I don't even know what me is anymore. It's been so bashed and pushed and squeezed down that I'm not even sure. And, you know, my family, like most, could be very judgmental, very critical. Um, they could be very persuasive in pushing me to one direction and, you know, and making me avoid another type of thing. But really... I had to shed all of that. And that's what a lot of people have to do, have to shed. I mean, your children may will not have the same thing, but if you've got non-starseed parents, non-starseed family, most people don't have that blessing. Then they have to find their own way. They have to break through this e collective ego and their own ego that's telling them, stay safe, blah, 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 blah. Because there is no safety, really. The old way of being safe and playing small doesn't work. We are conscious creators and starseeds are natural creators. They're naturally highly intuitive. They're naturally highly sensitive as well, which means they can absorb energies as well as feel energies. So they have to learn, they'll have to learn the basic technique of energy, which is how to, to invite higher energies and how to release lower. And all the transmissions that I offer and meditations usually begin with this, you know, invitation of higher light and a purging of lower that we absorb in cells, bones, organs, systems of the body, because we absorb it, you know. We can absorb collective fear. We can absorb collective shame. We can absorb the shame and fear of our family and guilt of our family. We need to purge it and go, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not running my life on those old stories anymore. And, and then we have to come out of the safe harbor, which is a bit scary because the ego will go, you know, that sea looks dangerous. Don't go out there. But, but there's a new landscape. So there's a battle between the, higher self that wants to protect us because the higher self is our 5d gps system and the ego is our 3d gps system the ego can't help us navigate a spiritual awakening it doesn't know how to do it it tries to shut it down and go let's ignore let's ignore whatever's calling you let's ignore what it's alive within you let's just do what's expected let's do what our family want us to do that kind of thing so this is the typical battle that star seeds go through uh, a bit like the Buddha, I suppose, where he had to leave the royal palace and he had to leave his family and go on the path. Not as extreme as that, but there's elements of, I have to say no to what the 3D matrix is offering me. And f for some, that's, that, that offering is quite strong. 
it takes a lot of energy to break through it and um, but break through it we have to go otherwise we turn our backs on the calling if we turn our backs on the calling we start to live a shallow life a, f a frustrated life a life where we know we're here to do something but we're not doing it and of course if we do that into our 70s and 80s then we can we can leave this world utterly frustrated and in a way it's been a wasted opportunity so it's easy much better to take the take the opportunity of following your heart following the calling following what's alive within you awakening the gifts of being a natural intuitive creator manifester which star seeds are i mean i know i i make it sound s s simple you know but i've <laughs> my journey has not been simple either so because my journey's not been simple i could talk this way as if it's simple if that i have permission if, if i had a simple easy awakening i probably wouldn't have the same permission to to speak this way Really. Well, but I know that the tumbles and the rocks and the falling off the path and coming back on. I know, I know the, the way, you know, I, I know, I know, um, I know too. And I actually, I was just listening to Eckhart Tolle a few days ago and he said something that was surprised that surprised me because I don't, I didn't, you know, ever read about his life. And he said, um, he, it was something about, do you cause your own suffering? And, um, and he said something to the effect, and I can't quote him, I don't know exa exact words, but um, basically he said something like, he had to go through a lot of suffering in order to awaken. Yeah. And, and I think that's true for everybody um, who's on the path. Yeah. Uh, you know, because when, when you can actually realize, or for myself and, you know, other people that I'm, I'm in my communities, when we realize, oh, we didn't, we, we had to, our soul put us on this path in order to awaken and we and what we identified with before is is not doesn't have to be our life anymore we have a choice we have a choice if we believe it and usually we wake up well, well the, the way it's been so far for a lot of star seeds to wake up through suffering and then the path is how do i grow through joy play fun awakening my gifts knowing my inner potential that's the path because suffering is just a, a limited period of there's only a limited use for it which is basically a slap wake up and then we have to learn, well, I'm, I don't want to keep learning that way. I want to learn through the, the, the other side, joy, fun, play, which is more a 5D way of, mm. of, of being. And so our identity changes from one where we, yeah, we cause our suffering, but even defend our suffering because a lot of people would defend their suffering. It's quite amazing, really. Uh, star seeds tend not to do that. But if you're a non-star seed, what I've noticed is a non-star seed will absolutely defend their suffering. Defend, this is my life. This is the way it is. Are you blaming me? Are you, you know, all they go through all that. And it's almost like pointless talking about this stuff with them because they just, just get some very upset really. So we're a star seed. If you say to them, well, you can grow through joy. They may not know how to do it immediately, but, event, but it's really intriguing. The possibility of it will totally intrigue a star seed where, and they will, uh, will, um, will, will follow the path. So I've, I remember meeting a star seed many years ago and she, 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 she sat on this sofa in the hotel and, she heard I was running these workshops and she came up to me and said, I hear you're the guy running all these starseed workshops. And she had very closed body, you know, folded arms and folded legs. And, but I could tell within all of that skepticism, she really wanted to know. So that can happen. You can get skeptical star seeds as well. Of course, we're not going to be, you know, Oh wow. Yeah. The unicorns, the rainbows. Yeah. We may be a bit like, you know, is it for real? You know, how, how can I trust it? But I could see in her energy, she was defending or protecting herself at the same time, wanted to open one. And then, and then she became almost like a devotee for a few years, you know, uh, following me around, you know, really <laughs> keen to know everything. And, and, you know, for me as well, I'm on a learning curve. I'm still finding out. I don't know all the answers I'm finding out as I'm going along, you know, but I have been teaching this stuff now for three or four years intensely so i at the beginning i was like well do i know any about do i do i know what to say to people but as i've gone along also i've got the downloads well i don't know but someone knows and so they'll give me what they'll give me some answers which hopefully will be intelligent and helpful to people so all of the transmissions and all of that meditation work now is a two-way conversation at the beginning it was one-way conversation i was getting downloads and i was trying to work out what is it mm -hmm. now it's a two-way conversation i just say well what is this What's the point of it? What, what's the impact of it? Mm -hmm. And I, so that's the deal I have. I run it through my system. And if it works in my system, I go, great, I'll put it out. But if it doesn't, I'll say, well, something's not quite right. Something's missing. Let's run through it again. 
because you know it's 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 not a, a, an exact art i think you know a, a channeling or or anything like this so but if i run it through my body i can tell whether it works or not or whether it's complete or not or whether anything's missing or not and so i do that and i say to them i'll only put it out if i if i get completely what it's about i know the point of it and i know that the whole process is complete and nothing missing and it actually works on me then I'll put it out. Otherwise I won't do it. And that's, so now it's a two way thing. And uh, it's more empowering for me to just say to them, Hey, you know, what about, what about this? And then I, I might get a, well, maybe, maybe, or, or, or what about that? And they go, Oh yeah. And it'll come that night, you know, bloom, there it goes. You know, I know some, one client said, you know, I'm struggling with anger. What do you think? Can you help me? And so I said, well, I'll ask. And I asked and that night, boom, it came. And next day I put it out. But some other things I've, I've, people have asked me and it's just not, just, just not really time or I don't know. So I, I, it's, a, it's a two-way conversation. So yeah, d but defending the suffering, creating the suffering, moving out of the suffering into joy, play and fun. And for anyone embedded in suffering, that might seem like, a, well, that sounds very nice, but that is the path. Gradually shedding all belief in the need, necessity for suffering. We don't need it. And I see, you know, I've got a, a large fa a family and, um, um, and they're not really, that family is not all star seeds, mostly not. And I see the incredible suffering going on. Actually, at the moment, in the last month, the suffering's ramped up quite a lot. And I have to stay out of the, out of the sink. I, I can't wash the dishes for them. I say, I give them love and empathy, but I can't. If you want to be in this suffering, you know, then I can't, I don't say it to them exactly like that. You know, I, I just have to let them be in it and let them find their own way out, not try and jump in and rescue them. So, yeah, because suffering can be recreated endlessly and even down bloodlines, it can be recreated from mother I, to yeah, daughter. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I feel, I feel like part of um, our path has been to release generational oppression. Um, that's how I call it or social conditioning. That's been, across bloodlines yeah. um, and truly to be quite honest with you that's how i felt the call i said i cannot live my life anymore because i will not let my children continue this uh, it has to stop with me yeah and that's me too. i made this huge shift yeah me too so in my family no one was an entrepreneur no one was really good with money and no one was following their heart and i i that was my journey. I said, well, I'll do that. You know, um, also I didn't want blah relationships. I wanted to have, you know, really powerful, loving, supportive ones. And that's been the journey as well. You know, a few bumps here and there for sure. But, um, you know, uh, and for you, I'm not sure where you're, you're from, Julie, your family are from, are they from, uh, where are they from originally? So I was born in New York, but my parents were from India. Uh, South, India. South Is India. That Hindu? Yeah. Um, I was born Hindu, but then I converted to Judaism. And so now oh, I'm wow. actually living in Israel. <laughs> yeah. But You're it was part of my path. Yeah, it was oh, completely wow. part of my path. Like, I feel completely at home here, to be quite honest with you. Hinduism <laughs> I, to Israel. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all, for me, it's all about, you know, there's own, there's the one. It's just oneness. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, and now I'm not practicing anything specifically. Um, yeah. but just following my intuition, but I feel very spiritual. Um, I was actually yeah. born into a spiritual family. Yeah. So it just, I just kind of pushed it down because I didn't know what to do with it until yeah. I got older. Well, obviously both those religions come a very uh, old and ancient and they have mm -hmm. these golden threads of, of spiritual truth within them, but they've got a little bit lost here and there because of just, or religions tend to mix spirituality with power structures rules you know churches temples and so it all gets mixed up in power play and a bit so it kind of gets a bit mixed and so sometimes the original messages that come through can get a little bit misunderstood or lost but i think as we awaken to a spiritual path we can go back and which is, spirituality is the path of experience and direct revelation it's not a path of faith in the same way as religion would be like faith, just believe it you know don't so I was raised church, a Christian church of England and Catholic for a while. And it's just like, this is, this is the way it is. And this is the set of beliefs. 
and you can you can you can question it as long as you don't go outside the box you stay in the box and question it as much as you like but i wasn't really content with the box you know i wanted to go outside the box and so i explored paganism for a long time mm -hmm. and uh, magic you know wicca magic shamanism and actually it helped me understand christianity a lot more mm. when i came back to it i kind of feel more of a connection to the christ energy and and all those some of the kind of kabbalistic energies as well but um but i'm not connected to the church because i feel all churches are a little bit you know dusty and faded and not really where it's at i, I think the original message is where it's at in my, all religions if you can find that original message yes. I, I completely agree. I actually see a lot of overlap in all religions. I was studying philosophy when I was in college because I was always fascinated. I didn't understand. I don't know. Just something was drawing me to that. And, but I never knew how to, you know, meld it into my life. Um, yeah. I, until, and someone recently said to me, cause I, you know, I just recently became a coach like two or three years ago. And she was like, what, you just started this path like two or three years ago? And I was like, no, really, it's since my birth. <laughs> you know, like, I just never figured it out until recently, but it was always yeah. inside of me. And I always knew, to be honest, you were completely right. I was against all kinds of structures of you know, my parents' religion. And even in Judaism, I was against all structures. But for some reason, I felt like I had to do it. And now it just all completely makes sense because there's so much overlay. Um, it's amazing the overlay of just you know love. I mean, love is really the bottom line in all religions, right? Because that's our yeah. highest truth. And yeah. when you could look at it from your highest truth, no matter who you talk to, Christian, whatever their religion is, they're going to agree with you because they agree with you in love. Yeah, all spiritual teachers should be able to agree because they're uh, tuning into that core love vibration, as you say. Exactly. But with tender. Uh, down here on the earth plane people fight over religion because they're fighting over faith systems you know my faith is better than your faith my god is better than your god or is different to your god it's just just the way it's just more of the suffering that's been going on on the planet really that is ending now because people don't oh there are still people who want to fight over it but really basically the path of the world i think is one of ending all of we're at the height of all this kind of war and fighting and conflict and religious conflict but I think that's because we're in this very volatile period. Eventually that will shift. People will see this time as a bit of a dark age. You know, why would you fight over that? It's more important things to do, put your energy into, you know, Starseed certainly wouldn't fight over it, but there are people who are still on the, their own path of evolution, which involves going through a certain amount of suffering as part of the learning curve. And I think this planet won't be host to that for much longer. You know, a few decades down the line, that's all going to be easing off. I just think we have to see this peaking of all the worst of it before we can look at it and go, you know, that's stupid and crazy, that is. So that's what I believe will happen. In the, although at the moment you look around the world, you think a lot of conflict, a lot of craziness, but I think, you know, this is just the worst bit of it. It will all ease off further down the line. Yeah, I, I'm feeling, I mean, some people are talking about this being a global activation, you know, what's going on right now. And um, to some extent, you know, the dark versus the light, like you said, and to some extent, I feel that that's true, you know, really, because we can choose, you know, people are healing themselves, you know, there's, there's now, it's not, uh, it's not something that's just new age, it's becoming more mainstream. And so when you can choose to have joy over, you know, fear or sadness or, or pain, who wouldn't choose joy? You yeah, know? Who wouldn't sure. choose, who wouldn't choose, you know, people are using their own remedies and why not? Because you know, who's going to run to the doctor? I'm not, the doctors are closed. <laughs> the doctors never had the answers. I've got know? my own, um, here it is. I've got my own, I made this thing called thieves oil. I don't know if you've ah, heard of it. No, what's so that? apparently in the black death in Europe, these robbers made a special oil that meant they could rob victims of the black death, but not catch it themselves. So this is the formula that you can put on uh, hankies or something and, you know, breathing in and keeps the nasties away. So if, if it worked in the Black Death, I thought it's probably got a good chance of working now. Probably a good chance, yes. <laughs> yes, but yeah. there's, there's things right outside our house that we could totally use that could, could protect us. And yeah. we don't, we're not looking. And I think, Steve, you made such an amazing, um, you know, you, you discussed that. You said so many amazing things. So people who haven't listened to this, you know, didn't catch it, like, listen again. Because Steve okay. has, has a wealth of, of everything. 
but uh, uh, and on my website there is a meditation for people to use for the the recent global pandemic to help shield and raise their vibration it's called the wellness shield meditation you can check it out on my website yeah steve so tell us more about how they can get more information about what you're doing so my website is the and uh yeah you'll find me the i'll put it in the details and uh, okay and my youtube channel is steve nabel and you'll see uh, it, there's an image of a kind of gold tree with a red background it's about 88 subscribers and you'll see the first uh, video is world meditation plus actually you might like the prayer to the cosmos it's a very um actually it's kind of aramaic uh, old prayer christ's mm -hmm. old prayer you might like that one I'll try prayer that. to the cosmos okay. yeah try it's only it's only uh, yeah great and and steve is also on instagram um that's how i follow him uh, and soundcloud um, yeah uh so instagram kind of steve the bell 101 and soundcloud is conscious media that was my that was the first channel i set up so i it's a bit too late to change the name now so i just left it as conscious media on soundcloud oh i'm also on instagram on insight timer and Steve Nobel. I've got about 17,000 followers there. So Insight Timer, what's the, oh, is oh. that like an app? Yeah, an app for meditation. Oh, so cool. that's quite right. popular as well. Nice. Maybe you should yeah. check that out if you've got any meditations. Yeah. 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 A friend of mine, actually, who's a big fan of yours, told me to go on Insight Timer. So she was really excited that you were going to be on this uh, today. Oh, lovely. Well, hello <laughs> to your friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if anyone's resonating with Steve, um, definitely check out you know, everything he said. I will share it in the, in the details so you can find it very easily. And, um, you know, I'm sure that you will, there will be something that will pop up. And if they want to contact you, is there any best um, way or should they just? Uh, they can, how they contact me? Well, uh, let me see. My email is Steve Nobel, N O B E L. -A at G on people can drop me an email or they can find me through Facebook. Steve Bell got two, I've got two profiles. Don't tell everyone. And <laughs> you'll find one of them there. Uh, and I've got a, I've got a group called global light workers on Facebook with about 32,000. So you can join that as well. And, uh, or Instagram, you can send me a message through Instagram. Lots of people do. That's how I connect. I with do Steve. respond. Yeah, he does. He does respond. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so it's those not are a robot. It is me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's always good to know that there's a person behind <laughs> these things. <It's> <laughs> um, so I'll put all that in the in the details. I really enjoyed um, speaking with you today. Thank you for all of your insight, sharing your life with us. I really, really appreciate that, and I know our viewers will as well. Um, do you want to say any closing words before I um, close the interview? Uh, I think I've said everything I could possibly say. I've probably said too much. People at home are already going, oh, God, so much to take in. <laughs> so go well. Don't feed the fears. Keep your vibration high. And, uh, yeah, that's the way through any of this stuff because um, certainly, like, viruses can't really cope with high vibration. Low, the lower the vibration, the more these things can kind of get in. So keep vibration high, stay joyful, stay creative, stay happy, keep dancing, keep meditating on the sunlight, you know. Yeah. Aho, aho, thank you for that. And any of you, if you're resonating with me, um, please connect with me, I'll put it in the notes. I do, uh, I help people to write their stories and to really open up to their new life, the joy and the pleasure that Steve so eloquently said. So if there's more that you'd like to learn, um, follow me at wildrodisheal.com and that'll be in the details. Thank you so much, Steve, and so much love to all of you. <laughs> Bye, Sheila. Bye.